Hey everybody, this is Ray Camden and I'm sharing another tool thanks to my good buddy Todd Sharp. If you watched my last video, uh, it was about a command line web server tool that he taught that uh, he shared with me. And just this morning, he shared another tool that like two minutes after I saw it, I'm like, oh my God, I have to record a video about this because it was so cool. So thank you, Todd Sharp. You're awesome. And thank you for being an inspiration. And the tool that I want to show today, the one you're seeing on screen now is called JSON Server. So before I talk about like how it works and what it's doing, let me actually show you this in action. So I have a JSON file and it has a set of posts. Uh, this is all static, hard-coded data. It has some comments. Uh, it has a field called profile. And what I can do from the command line is do npx JSON server and then point to the JSON file and hit enter. And it is going to create a web server based on that. So I will open this up and you can see it's made a nice little uh, you know index homepage and it has links for post comments or profiles. And this actually comes right from the JSON file. And if I click on post, I can see that what it's done is that it's taken my static JSON and has actually built a little API server for me. So hitting slash post uh, grabs all that information from the JSON. Uh, if I were to go in here and just well, copy and paste, comb saw like that, give me one second, we'll call this ID four, really last article and it has 20 views, I'll save it. I'll go back, reload, and it shows up. So along with just you know rendering a, a set of data, it also by configuration allows me to get one particular value. Now uh, this is all documented, but like I could have guessed that you know slash post returns everything, then slash x where x is a particular ID uh, would actually match it. What's exceptionally cool is that it even supports uh, creating and deleting data as well. So I'm in the browser here, I'm doing simple get request. Let me go back to my index. If I open up Postman and do a delete call, and hopefully that's big enough to read, but I'm doing a delete on post slash four, I'll hit send on that. And if I go back to my index and reload, it's gone. And I thought, oh, it's just doing like an in-memory modification. But if you go into the JSON, it, it actually edits it. So that, that may be a good or a bad thing. You may want to have like a backup copy just in case. But uh, so again, along with deleting data, I could also do a put request uh, to, to add new information as well. So why? Well, you can imagine a scenario where you are a front-end developer and you need to build a front-end to an API that does not exist yet. You may have the data, maybe in a database or whatever, uh, but you don't actually have an API set up to begin working with that. Well, you can create a JSON copy of that data and then use this tool and then start working on that front-end. At some point when you know the data is, is or the API actually exists, then you can switch from using this. Now, along with you know getting the information uh, and getting like a particular key, there's multiple different uh, query parameters that you can add that will do things. So, for example, uh, if I wanted to filter on views greater than 500 that's just baked in. And all I did there is do a question mark, views underscore GT equals a particular number and they support less than, greater than or equal, less than or equal, equal as well. Uh, that's just kind of baked in automatically. Uh, I can also do basic pagination. Now I don't have a lot of data, but I can say page equals one and per page equals two and get essentially a paged API. And look, it returns just uh, one page of data. 
but it also tells me like how many items exist and how many pages there are. And that's, that's just all baked in. You can also do things like sorting. So I'll sort by views. This will default to ascending. If I don't like that, I can just add a, I believe it's a minus sign and it will sort the other way. Um, another cool feature, and I forgot to make a note of this, so we'll look at the docs, is that it can do basic embedding. So let me actually get to their embed, underscore embed. So let me show you how this works. Embed equals comments. And you can see is that it recognized, and we'll go back to our JSON, how comments had a post ID that linked back to an original post such that I could tell it when I fetch my post, I want you to grab the related information, in this case, the comments uh, that go along with each particular post. So all this and more is all just kind of baked in uh, without me having to write anything at all. I wanna show one more kind of uh, cool feature is that if we open this up a little bit, you can, you can see it mentions static files serving public directory if it exists. At the time that I am recording this, uh, there is a bug with this feature where if you have a public directory, it will not be picked up by default. Uh, the, the project administrator for this tool has already responded saying, yes, it's a bug. Uh, so by the time you watch this, it may already be fixed. But I can actually just go in here and say dash s, so static directory equals public. Now, by the time you watch this, you probably don't have to do that. Uh, but if you don't want to use a non-public folder and some, or just something else, this is the argument that you would pass to do that. So now when I run this, it's gonna look in public and everything there will just be like a regular web server. And if I open this up now, we could see that I'm no longer seeing the automatic generated one, but instead some basic HTML. And if I go back to my code, you could see I built, you know, kind of like what I mentioned, a basic front end. Uh, in this case, I am hitting the API that JSON server provides to load my posts and then render it on screen. So all in all, I think really, really cool. Uh, you may be asking, yeah, especially if you watched my last video, on HTTP server, uh, would I use this instead? Probably not. Um, HTTP server is kind of basic, just vanilla web serving. Uh, so if I'm doing that, then I will just use that. If I needed a mock API of some sort, I would absolutely use this. And I love the fact that it has the basic web serving part of it baked in as well. One last thing that I will share with you, and I'll have a link to this in the video. Uh, they support JSON files, and they also support JSON 5, uh, which I had not heard of. And basically, it's a way to write JSON that's more for humans writing JSON and being easier to write versus actually using it like JSON. And there's all kinds of things where like you don't have to put quotes around your keys and you could use single quotes. Uh, the JSON server docs actually has an example and you could see how like, for example, posts and comments and all the keys are not actually quoted with double quotes. So yeah, this would be a bit quicker to, to write. I, I appreciate that. I'm still not sure if I would actually use that. Uh, but it's cool. I learned something new. So anyway, I uh, hope this uh, is cool to you as well. Thank you again to Todd Sharp for sharing the, uh, this with me and uh, enjoy.